impacts on the world, within our own community. Faculty, staff, and students of all identities will feel valued, represented, and equally empowered to pursue their goals. Here, we'll create meaningful connections with our peers, our mentors, and the St. Louis community. We will gather knowledge and learn how to apply it to build lives filled with meaning and purpose. We will go out into the world as engaged, active, 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 and impactful members of our communities. Together, our voices will rise to shape the next decade and all the decades to come. We are ready. The time is now. Welcome to the Decade of Arts and Sciences. Welcome indeed. Welcome everyone to this event here tonight. Um, I'm delighted to be here and thank you all for joining this event. My job here today is very simple. Um, I, it's just to get out of the way, basically. Uh, we've got some excellent music to experience and a wonderful opportunity to talk with, uh, with various musicians at WashU and the sooner we do that, the better. But just so you have a sense of why I'm talking to you at all, uh, and taking up just two minutes of your time. My name is Abram Van Ingen, and as co-chair of the Strategic Planning Committee, I just wanna say how much this particular event instantiates the values that lie at the heart of arts and sciences. We're gathered here today, I mean, you can look at this event here today as a community that stretches beyond the campus itself. It, it includes faculty and staff and students, but it also stretches beyond WashU's walls. And that is really a large part of the strategic plan that we drafted. It's an explicit goal. Community is not composed just of those who are on the campus, and it's not just invested in the success of those who work on this campus. The WashU community, it goes beyond WashU. And the creativity that you're going to see here today, the creativity on display tonight, which is supported by WashU is not just for WashU alone. Instead, as part of the design of the strategic plan, we'll be investing resources to forge connections between the academy and society. That's a stated pillar. It's an explicit goal of the overall plan. And Dean Hu's vision for arts and sciences, which is a collective vision forged from the community itself, uh, all the faculty, staff, and students and beyond the alumni, uh, and everyone invested in the success of arts and sciences contributed to the overall strategic plan. We have long supported work here at WashU that not only pushes the boundaries in and between disciplines, but does so always keeping in mind the broader significance and the bigger community that our work reaches, engages, learns from, and aims to both challenge and nourish. That's what this new strategic plan is all about, and today is a very good taste of it. So we hope you enjoy the program. I'd like now to introduce Barb Bindler. Barb is a 1965 alumna of arts and sciences. She met her husband, Dan, a 1965 WashU business alumnus while attending Washington University. Barb and Dan are involved in various areas of the university, arts and sciences, business, Kemper Art Museum, Seitman Center, the Wiedenbaum Center, and just in case that's not enough to keep them busy or, or give them enough to do, they also volunteer for all their class reunions, which is great. Barb is the co-chair of the Arts and Sciences Elliott Society Committee. She encourages the committee to retain and solicit donors, be socially active and engage great speakers with the committee. Barb is an admirer of music and is excited about the department's 75th anniversary. And we'll have more on that in a moment. So welcome, Barb. Thanks, Abram, for your many, many wise words. Good evening, everyone. As Abram mentioned, I am Barb Bindler, an alumna of the class of 1965. I also co-chair the Arts and Sciences Elliott Committee. The Arts and Sciences Elliott Society has just over 2,000 members and plays a vital role in sustaining liberal arts at Washington University. Early in the pandemic, WashU created the COVID Relief Fund 
an annual fund that supported many arts and sciences students and faculty. The music department used some of these funds to ship musical instruments home to the students, enhanced academic classrooms for remote technology. They purchased specialized maskings for all wind players and provided digital equipment for remote learning. Our students, faculty and staff continued their excellence in learning and teaching during this challenging time. Thank you for your resiliency and a special thank you to our Elliott Society members whose gifts help make remote learning possible. The music department has over 600 students enrolled in lessons and ensembles and hosts a full student orchestra, wind ensemble, choir, jazz band, and numerous chamber music ensembles and jazz combos. Over 80% of our students enrolled in music are pursuing majors outside of music. Many take music because they love it and want to make music for a lifetime. This spring, the music department is celebrating its 75th anniversary with a series of invited alumni guests from performers to scholars. If you are interested in making a gift in honor of this anniversary, there are two fundraising challenges that have been established from members of the Friends of Music Council to commemorate this occasion. Friends of Music is the department's lively group of supporters, over 300 members strong, who are dedicated music lovers who support the student experiences and some of the costs associated with their continued musical training. Our deep thanks to Mary Pillsbury and Charles Metz, who have challenged both our community and Wash U alums to a generous matching campaign. Thank you all for your support. I would like to now introduce Christopher Stark. Christopher Stark, whose music the New York Times has called fetching and colorful, has been awarded prizes from the Guggenheim Foundation, Chamber Music America, and the Fromm Foundation at Harvard. Named a rising star by the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, his music and arrangements have been performed by ensembles such as the Detroit Symphony, Los Angeles Philharmonic, and Toronto Symphony Orchestra. Recent highlights have included a performance at the Whitney Museum of American Art as part of the 2016 New York Philharmonic Biennial and a commission from the Santa Fe Chamber Music Festival for their 50th anniversary season in 2023. In 2018, Stark was a resident artist in Norway, where he worked with musicians from the Bergen Philharmonic. And in 2020, he was the Aaron Copeland Fellow in Music at the Velasco Foundation in Italy. His film score for the feature length film Novaciate appeared at Sundance in 2017 and was theatrically released by Sony Pictures Classics. Welcome, Christopher Stark. Thank you, Barb, for that really kind introduction. I'm really thrilled to be here and to talk with everybody today. Uh, thank you, everybody, and welcome to uh, Composing Creativity, uh, Perspectives on Musical Expression. 
when I was asked to participate in this event, um, I jumped at the chance to showcase the talent of our WashU music students. Um, I get to know our amazing students through my course composition workshop, uh, where the students meet with me individually every week and develop unique projects that help them explore and discover how to express themselves through music. Um, the student body has incredibly diverse interests. And this semester alone, we had projects ranging from full orchestra to klezmer music, uh, rock music, pop music, hip hop. We had solo piano, music theater, string quartets, electronic dance music, uh, and the list goes on. And uh, while the students are, are incubating these projects in their lessons, uh, we also meet as a class once a week where we exchange ideas, share our progress, uh, talk with professional composers uh, about the craft of creativity and so forth. I firmly believe that if we are to solve the problems that face us today and tomorrow, um, that we need to develop the creative side of our brains and become comfortable sharing new ideas with other people. Uh, this class allows students to develop that skill set, uh, which can be nerve wracking, uh, but seeing how proud they are after they create something, share it, uh, and watch it resonate among their peers uh, is absolutely priceless uh, to me as a teacher. Um, I'm so excited that two WashU composers are joining us today. Uh, Cole Reyes, who graduated in 2020 and is now living in New York City and beginning a very successful career as a composer, and Joseph Mosby, who is a freshman and part of the class of 2025, and just starting on his journey in music. Uh, this session today is really a chance for us to hear from these two remarkable young composers, uh, and there will be a question and answer session with them after we hear from both of them and hear some of their music. You can put those questions in the Q&A chat window. So you'll want to stick around and think of some good questions while we listen to their tunes. And so I'd like to start today by introducing uh, my former student, Cole Reyes. Cole arrived at WashU with an immense skill set as a singer, piano player, composer, and arranger. Uh, I believe he already had published choral music when he arrived, which is amazing. Uh, Cole knew he wanted to be a composer the second he set foot on WashU's campus, and his enthusiasm for music still resonates uh, within the student body. Um, they really look up to him. Uh, Cole has won a number of national prizes, um, but perhaps most remarkably, while at WashU, he operated a coffee shop out of his dorm room, and I regularly enjoyed the ice lattes that would accompany him to his lessons. Cole is extremely talented and also a very kind and generous person. Cole, could you tell us about the piece we are going to hear today and perhaps what inspired you to write it? Yes, of course. Thank you so much for the kind introduction. Um, it's so great to be back uh, via Zoom with uh, the WashU community. Uh, the piece that uh, we're going to play a little bit of is entitled To Be Confident. I wrote the piece for uh, six instrumentalists and one vocalist um, as sort of a tribute to some of the life lessons I had been learning uh, through quarantine and through the time of this COVID-19 pandemic, specifically on the, uh, the topic of becoming confident in oneself as a person, as well as their art form. So uh, there's going to be two short little video clips uh, that are going to be played now.
Thank you so much for listening. I'll hand it back over to Chris. Beautiful, Cole. You're writing, uh, you know, such sophisticated and beautiful music now. It's such, um, so amazing to see your development as a composer. And it's uh, so fun for me as a, a teacher to sort of see you, you know, going off and doing all these amazing things and your music becoming more rich and more complex. Um, so awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that with us today. Um, so I would now like to turn our attention to um, our freshman student, Joseph Mosby, um, who, like Cole, arrived on campus with uh, an incredible amount of skill as a composer. Um, we're just wrapping up our first semester of getting to know one another, but he has already uh, become a bit of a star in our composition class. Um, just this week, he presented a new song uh, in progress to the class, and I witnessed uh, multiple students tearing up and one student remarked that they believed our class would someday be part of a documentary about Joseph's life after he becomes famous. <laughs> uh, this is the impact Joseph um, has on his peers. And um, I'm not sure I've ever seen anything like it in my class, actually. Uh, he's an amazing singer, as you'll hear in this video, and also a gifted pianist, guitarist, trumpet player, and of course, uh, composer. So Joseph, I was wondering if you could tell us a bit about the piece we're going to hear today um, and what inspired you to compose it. Yeah, thank you very much. So the piece is, uh, sorry, the piece is called Entropy and I sort of wrote it about the weird um, in-between feeling I was getting when I first sort of arrived on campus uh, where I felt like I just wasn't doing enough, I guess, if that makes sense. Because for a huge chunk of my life, just like getting to college and getting here was like the end goal, I guess, in a way. So when I finally like made it, I guess, I was just like, hmm, well, now that I'm here, what do I do now, I guess? And I just felt kind of like lost and confused about things, I guess. And like I was wasting my time, I guess, in a way, because I don't know, just felt like a lot of pressure to like make it and be successful as soon as possible, if that makes sense. So I just took all of that and channeled it into a new piece, I guess. And the interesting thing is um, I originally wrote like the lyrics and the uh, music and everything on guitar. And I sort of originally imagined it as more of a rock sort of piece um, or a song, I guess. That's like how I was envisioning it in my head. But when we went to a composition workshop, I thought it would be a cool opportunity to try and dabble in something a bit more orchestral because I've always wanted to try and write more for that kind of group. So I wasn't intending for this piece to be um, for a string quartet, but I decided to go for it and give it a shot. And it manifested into this pretty cool, um, pretty cool thing. So, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. <laughs> the year I'm done take a seat and shed a tear it's one too many compromises all this blue light burns my eyes it's just such a shame I lost the game again knock me out and please just call me when you know this window's closed as I lose focus sometimes I feel like I'm going nowhere cruising way too fast I don't want to lose this no fair gotta make it last when did it become so hard to run the race? It's everything I wanted, yeah, here I am Trying harder than ever to fly Oh, just try Another night I think I might be wrong about my life and where I might belong Could I go try again? 
Or am I stuck here till the end? I've got all the time to use and none at all Cause while we could be great, I just might fall It sucks sometimes, I know And right when my face hits the ground It just feels like I'm going nowhere Losing way too fast I don't wanna lose this no fair Gotta make it last When did it become so hard to run the race? It's everything I wanted Trying harder than ever to fly Oh, just try Staring back at me When did it become so real? I try to feel the spark that I've been missing And it's still there Tucked under the entropy of life Oh, just try Just amazing, Joseph, just amazing. I mean, it's really stunning. You have such a, a gift. Um, really beautiful performance too by members of our, our, our instrumental faculty at the 560 Music Center. Um, so thank you so much for sharing your piece with us today and your performance. So um, now you know why I say I have the best job in the world. Uh, Getting to be present uh, while these extraordinary students um, make beautiful art and watching them learn how to be vulnerable and expressive and communicate their talents uh, is just so special. And I'd love to get to the Q&A as quickly as possible because I'm certain people have questions for these two talented um, young composers. And um, you can type your questions directly into the chat Q&A window, uh, which we will monitor. Um, but I wanted to start things off by asking Cole and Joseph if they wouldn't mind speaking about their time at Wash U and what it was or has been like to be a part of this community. And um, since you're here, Joseph, right now, um, and Cole will be here in a second, uh, I'll start with you and then Cole can jump in after you and I'll start monitoring questions. Um. Yeah, I'd say it's been a pretty great experience so far. 10 out of 10, for sure. Or, hmm. Well, I mean, like, you know, there have been ups and downs, I guess. But that's, you know, part of life, I guess. But overall, I've had lots of really cool opportunities like this um, coming in. Like, this is my first semester, and I already have, like, something like performed by actual people. That's crazy. And I've, like, had the really cool opportunity to meet lots of really cool people and make lots of amazing friends and connections and, like, yeah, it's, it's been a great time for sure. And for a while, I was um, a little unsure about how college overall would go, but I definitely say I'm on a, on a good track in a good place for sure. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I think WashU is kind of a really interesting place to, to do music 
um, because you have such amazing faculty and you kind of have their un undivided attention like the whole time, which is uh, something that is really, really hard to find hardly right. anywhere. Uh, and I think uh, on top of that, not only having that attention from faculty, but also being surrounded by so many other people who are so dedicated in what they're doing outside of music, that that dedication kind of impacts your own work in some, in some way. And I know for myself, I, I had an extraneous degree as well. I also studied math while I was at WashU. And, and being in those classes actually formed how I would think about music theory and all of these other topics um, in ways that like, it would be almost impossible to learn just from a music class, um, which I think is an entirely valuable experience. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, I was also in acapella for four years. And to this day, like vocal music and that style of singing, I keeps creeping into everything I write, um, whether or not I even like intend it to, it just kind of ends up there. And I, I cannot stress enough that like the amount of different types of experiences that I was able to have while at WashU all culminate in this sort of whirlwind of, of idea and philosophy behind what I write. Uh, and it all creates something, something super unique, I feel. Yeah, yeah. definitely. There's a, yeah, there's just like a really thriving arts community overall here. Like there's so many people pursuing lots of really interesting and unique things, not even like just within the music department, but also just like within the Washington community overall, like what you said with acapella too, like that's a, a huge thing here. And it's like really cool too. And so many people are pursuing lots of different interests and passions. And it's, it's really inspirational to see how it all plays out, I guess. So, yeah. Awesome. So I have a, a question for you both from, from the audience here. Uh, they have asked, has music been a significant part of your growing up years or how did you get into music? And I'll start with Joseph. Um, yeah, I, I'd say it's been a pretty significant thing in my life for a while. Um, the earliest thing I can remember is that like um, both of my parents were like in my church's choir growing up. So that was always like a huge thing in my family. And when I was about seven or eight-ish, that was when my dad started to teach me piano stuff. And I got really into doing that in our church and also like singing in the choir and stuff. And then I started to transition into just like writing my own songs about little ideas and stuff that was going on in my life and um, picking up new instruments when I had the chance. Um, like in middle school, that was when I started with my school's orchestra or band technically playing trumpet. And that was a pretty cool experience. And then around high school is when I started to dip into um, theater and cool stuff like that. And yeah, it's just, music's always been a pretty big thing in my life. I'm just, throughout the years, I've tried to explore different avenues in it and discover new stuff and cool stuff. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, similar, very similar background in that. I, I started music, uh, I started taking piano lessons actually uh, in first grade and I very quickly hated uh, practicing. And so as early as I, you know, could figure out where notes were on a keyboard, I just kind of started, you know, at first it started just me banging on the piano and eventually those turned into me figuring out how melodies worked and kind of like teaching myself and, and uh, using that sort of like home tool of just having a keyboard at home uh, as a resource to just kind of explore, you know, what was possible. Um, and so I also started singing in choirs in elementary school. Um, and I feel like really early on, I knew that music was gonna be a part of my life forever. Um, but it wasn't really until like the very tail end of even high school that I knew that specifically writing music was going to be a part of my life forever. Awesome. Great. Uh, okay, we're going to continue on with some more questions here. Uh, we have a question for Joseph. Can you describe what it's like to be in the composition workshop? 
hearing works by other students and how that affects you? Um, yeah, it's, it's really inspirational. Um, because like for me personally, uh, writing music has always been like a very solidary thing, I guess. Like I'm very easy to just like writing my own stuff and not really like sharing it with other people, I guess. So um, being in a space where everyone was really open about like sharing all these different like things that they were working on coming from like so many different genres and influences that I never would have even like considered. Like I have like a running list of like artists and bands and groups that I have to check out just from like stuff that we've talked about in class. But yeah, it's, it's a really cool experience for sure. And the thing I think I like most about the class is how um, open-ended, I guess it is. It's very much like, um, like sort of what I was just saying, everyone's just kind of like um, starting with uh, a genre or an idea or a musical technique or just any little thing that's really like interesting and cool to them and just like going off and going off and like making a whole project around that. And that's uh, really cool to both like do and to see other people doing. So yeah, really cool. Cool. All right, next question. And maybe Cole can start with this one. At what point do you share your new works in progress with others pretty early in the process or when you feel like it's already polished and close to finished? This is a, a tough question that I am still to this day trying to figure out the answer. Um, right now I've sort of built a network of like a couple of people that I really trust with my musical ideas that I will like to start something. <coughs> I'll start something and I'll pass it off to them. And I'll be like, is this worth pursuing? Do you like this? Um, and they might give me some feedback. I'm st I still take composition lessons. And so that is pretty early on, but really to the wider audience, I usually don't want to release stuff until it is in a place where I, you know, I've gotten it performed or I'm happy with the recording. Um, and really feel that it is representative of how I want the piece to sound. Go ahead, Joseph. Oh, okay. you have a, something to add. Sure. <laughs> yeah, no yeah. Um, sort of the same thing. Yeah, usually I uh, don't like sharing things until it's in a pretty good spot, I think. And it's like uh, representative of like what I think I can like uh fully like do and achieve I don't know it's like when usually whenever I start any little project I have a sort of like a vision of like a vague um, idea of like how it can turn out and how it can be this really cool thing but it takes a while to actually like get it there so usually it just takes a little minute of like working through it um on my own to get it to what I know it can be I guess um but I'm trying to work more on like being more vulnerable with like works in progress and collaborating with other people and stuff. So, yeah. Great. So um, what influences <clears throat> do you all have um, for what this person asking the question has described as a sort of fusion of pop and classical music from what we heard today? Um, who would you say are influences uh, for this kind of genre mixing that you're doing here? Mm. That's a tough question. Um, I feel, I, I mean, from a, like when I started writing music, I had a lot of influences that were tied to the like late romantics and early impressionists. Like I, I love to this day, Debussy, Ravel, um, Schumann, Schubert, Mahler, all of these kind of like huge names in the worlds of comp, uh, like classical composition. Uh, but I feel that the, the way that the world is moving and the more interdisciplinary we kind of become as a society, um, people become really interested in these works that kind of have this kind of cross-pollination. And so I would say, despite, you know, a lot of being what I listen to being, you know, these classical masterworks and even contemporary composers, um, I just, I listen to a lot of, you know, indie pop, I listen to pop music, I listen to, you know, rock, alternative, um, a lot of recently, like, uh, 
uh, ambient like drone music even um, to kind of like see already what's out there. Um, and I feel like there's, there's something to learn from all of these different sort of genres that can be incorporated into a concert music setting, um, even, even to the point of having, and specifically with the, the piece that you actually heard today, I, the vocalist, uh, Carrie Lee, was you know, a classically trained vocalist, like through and through, I think she was studying opera at the time. And I was very specific in my directions that I gave to her while she performed the piece that most of the piece was supposed to be, you know, without vibrato, with, you know, under the voice, like very meditative and almost like the type of singing that you would never do in front of an audience. And I feel, especially with a lot of the vocal music that I'm seeing that is starting to come about, that this sort of completely rethought way of thinking about the voice and how you can perform as a vocalist is, you know, it started in, you know, that pop, indie, folk even sort of realm and is now seeping into the concert hall, which I think is super fascinating. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'd say one of my biggest influences was probably like theater scores and things like that. Um, specifically, um, Alex Lacamoire. <laughs> um, to be honest, it's like one of the big things that drew me into like writing for strings and like traditional composition stuff in the first place it was just hearing like a lot of the really like beautiful lush orchestrations that you hear with like a lot of really cool theater shows and I was like hey that's pretty cool I want to try doing that I guess so that's um sort of the vibe I was going for with um the orchestration but um another artist that I really uh enjoy and look up to is a fella named Cody Fry, which is pretty cool. And one reason why I really like his music is because a lot of the stuff he does is sort of like this little hybrid, uh, or it's sort of like the hybrid vibe that I have with the piece that I made here, where it's like you have this huge like orchestral setting and like all these different instruments playing this beautiful arrangement of a piece, but there's also like vocals and songwriting and like that very like personal vibe and I think the way you can combine like the huge dramatic nature of like a whole like symphony or string quartet with like the personal close intimate nature of like songwriting and stuff I think that's a really cool like clash to have and that's something I'm trying to like dive more into and something that Cody Fry does especially well so he's very cool and um yeah I'm trying to think of other like specific artists <laughs> that um sort of inspire me but um, I don't know. I just kind of like absorb stuff from everywhere that I listen to um, whenever I can, even if it's music that I don't uh, particularly enjoy, I guess. Like there's always something to learn and appreciate with any form of music. So yeah, there's there's inspiration everywhere, I would say. Yeah. Totally, totally. Great answers, guys. Uh, all right, so now we're gonna get into the technical here. Do you start with a melody? a rhythm, lyrics, or something else? Joseph, you can start this time. Okay, um, let's see. Usually I start with melody. Um, you know, like the whole process is pretty fluid and you know, it can happen any which way or whatever. But for the most part, um, me working on music, it starts with like fiddling around on the piano or the guitar here. Wow. <laughs> 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 but yeah, um, yeah, it's usually I start with like a melody or a specific chord progression that I really like, and I'll just um, sit with it for a little bit, play around with different rhythms, different voicings, and just see what different um, ideas come to me about it, I guess. So like, with, for example, with the piece that I wrote here, it pretty much all resonated out from Oh, we should have plugged this in. Uh, this is a very <laughs> thing. It was just like sitting right here, so I thought it'd be a good opportunity. But yeah, it basically started with that chord right there, and I was like, "Ooh, that's that's pretty cool. I can probably do something with that." And I just sort of sat here, literally right here for a little bit, played different stuff with it, and tried to see what different lyrics might be, different possible chord changes, I guess, and. Yeah, I just sat with it for a little bit and tried to see where it can go. And eventually the rhythm for the lyrics and the melody sort of came to me. 
And once I had that, the actual like words, I just came in and filled in the blanks with that. And then there was a song, I guess. So yeah. <laughs> How about you, Cole? Um, I, I've been actually really experimenting with my process recently. Uh, I used to, you know, act, just sit down at a piano and see whatever would come out of my hands, um, which started off as a really great way for me to like think about harmony and texture. Um, but I, I started thinking about, you know, like how else could I do this? Is, is there something that maybe works better for me? Is there something that maybe achieves a completely different result? Uh, and actually this piece was a, a perfect reflection of that. I had never written a piece the way I wrote specifically this one. I, I, I knew the orchestration of the, the seven parts that I was going to be writing for. And I had the first bar mapped out in my head and everything else pretty much from there on afterwards was me uh, improving on a line inside of the, the notation software that I use. And so a bunch of these parts that are very, you know, they oftentimes sound like polyphonic or they're not, not quite together were these kind of like delays that I kind of created just from the natural uh, discrepancies between the different lines of improvisation that I had. Um, and then as that sort of developed, like the text actually started like, like coming into like, ah, this is what I should say here. Um, and so uh, that's kind of how I wrote specifically that piece. Um, but then there's a bunch of other pieces that I had written recently that are kind of more uh, rhythmically based. And so I think of, you know, here's a rhythm that I really, really like, um, you know, a bar of 4-4 four, four, or, you know, a couple bars of, of music and just having that sort of repetition of, all right, what if I repeat it and change one other thing? What if I repeat it and change two other things? What if I throw it in different instruments here or there? Um, and kind of taking just a single idea and playing it out over and over until like it kind of creates this whole arc of here's everything that can be expanded upon this one germ of a couple bars of music, maybe even one bar of music. Um, and both of which I think have a lot of their merits and they, but they create such different worlds of music. Uh, and I think that's the beauty of, of all of it is that you dependent on what works for you, you can create massively different, uh, but still completely interesting things. Great. So we have a question here that I think I might even answer very quickly. It says, do today's choral composers ever consult old timers like Handel, Brahms, Britain for technical advice? And I would say yes, all the time. And there, we have many, many courses at WashU where students learn this. And uh, of course, always checking to see what the precedent is and learning from, from scores and recordings. Um, so which composers have influenced you the most or do you, 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 or do you admire the most, especially among living composers? But if classical earlier composers were paramount, share those as well. Maybe the two of you could just give a few examples of composers that have inspired you. I know you've already mentioned some, some artists and um, we can get to the few more questions. Go ahead, Cole. Perfect. Um, yeah, I think the, oh, there's so many to choose from and I probably should have prepared this. Um, uh, currently, um, the, so there's John Adams and John Luther Adams that have been monumental in the way that I think about uh, orchestral music and, and the things that you can actually create with music these days, which is just incredible. Um, more, uh, he's recently passed, but uh, Jerzy Ligeti was also extremely influential in the way that I could think about um, non like almost non-functional harmony but ha harmony that still very much is you know based around this sort of paradigm that he kind of created uh but is not necessarily what you learn in you know the theory classes that you take to be a music major um as well uh there's a bunch of uh post-minimalists um that i i really admire you know uh 
Julia Wolf, Michael Gordon, uh, David Lang, um, who else am I thinking of? Bryce Desner has a lot of really cool uh, music, especially for uh, guitar, because he's a really awesome guitarist, um, uh, as well as Nico Muley, all just like incredible composers that I think kind of create this uh, awesome, awesome sound world that is is just so interesting. Great. Cool stuff. All right, Joseph, anybody you can think of? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think here. Uh, first off, Michael Markowski, for sure. Um, he uh, writes concert music that's um, really stuck with me, surprisingly, over the years. Um, like, I played music from, like, a lot of different composers and stuff when I did, like, one ensemble and band and stuff through middle and high school, but Michael Markowski's pieces are just, I don't know, there's something about them. They're just really top-notch, and um, I know he specifically has a piece called City Trees, which uh, it's, I don't know how to describe it, but or actually, no, I do know how to describe it. It's very like dramatic and solemn and I don't want to say mournful, but it, it has a very cinematic quality to it, I guess. And that was uh, something that I was like really trying to go for in um, this piece specifically literally like the same chord progression and everything now that I think about it. But um, yeah, Michael Markowski, he's pretty cool. Um, a few film composers, um, John Williams, Hans Zimmer, Dan Romer, those guys are pretty cool. Um, let's see, is there anyone else? Hmm. I can't think of anyone else right now, but I will get back to you on that. Yeah, um, like I said earlier, uh, I'm still um, a bit new to the orchestral scene. So I'm, I don't know too much about um, lots of different, or like the standard uh, repertoire of like um, composers and stuff, but I am learning, I guess. David Bruce, that's another guy that just came to mind. He's, he has great music too. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right, we have, Time for one more question, but we have two questions. One is geared at each of you. So Joseph, have you considered writing a piece for voice only? For example, an acapella group winking emoji. And that's from <laughs> Griffin Brown, who maybe you might know, I don't know. Hmm, yes, I, I do know him, yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> I have considered um, writing for voice. I'm actually yeah. kind of working on that. Um, not like right now, but generally speaking. So you, Griffin Brown specifically, will be hearing from that in a little bit soon, maybe. <laughs> All right. And Cole, in your New York music scene, do you ever reflect on your liberal arts background? And if so, in what way? Uh, every day. I, I feel that uh, part of what makes... New York to be specifically a, a really awesome and bizarre place is that everybody that ends up here has some sort of strange collective experience that all led them here. Um, and I feel that if I had gone to, you know, conservatory for my undergrad, I would have been very limited in what I was exposed to musically and um, intellectually. And I think that would have ultimately produced something entirely different than who I am now. And I feel that, you know, as I had mentioned a little bit before, um, pursuing a math major slash being around students in every sort of realm that there is to study at a, at a major research institution, all have these sort of different influences that, you know, they would pass over to me. Uh, so I remember getting just like music upon music upon music that I'd never heard before from people that didn't study music at all. Um, and I feel like that is particularly unique uh, in the sense of just having all these different people. Um, and then on top of that, I feel that specifically while I was at Wash U, I learned how to write music for people who don't listen to concert music. Um, which, because I mean, 
the vast majority of people at, at WashU are not necessarily music students, music faculty, um, but they would be the ones that would be showing up at these concerts, you know, to support. And I felt that it was a really interesting conversation to dialogue with them after these concerts of my music or, you know, of anybody else's and get their opinion on what did you feel about, uh, about these works? How, what had an impact on you? Um, and, you know, I asked that to a music student and they go, oh, the deceptive cadence after the second movement was just divine. And I'm like, I, I don't really care about that <laughs> at this moment. I want to know like what, what tugged at your heartstrings? What, what's gonna, what are you going to remember tomorrow morning? And I feel that anybody, whether they understand anything about music or not, can answer that question. And as, you know, creators, we can use that intel to like inform how we write in the future. Great. All right. Uh, I can't say enough how thankful I am that you both were able to do this and share your music with us today. It was really awesome. Um, it's obviously awesome uh, getting to know you through the composition workshop and seeing your, your careers and ideas develop. So thank you so much for being here, Cole and Joseph. Um, thank you everybody who attended our, our event tonight. It was amazing. Um, and uh, thank you to the musicians who performed these pieces very beautifully. It was awesome. And thank you everybody for your questions. Um, so I hope you all have a nice evening. Thanks. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a good night, everyone.